virtual reality is not just the latest trend in technology, it has the capacity to be so much more. VR is most commonly associated with video games, but it has the potential to be implemented into a wide range of industries and could change the social landscape for future generations. This documentary will ask an important question. What are the possibilities of virtual reality? Virtual reality is an odd thing, I guess is probably the best way to start. I think it's hard to describe in words because you don't really understand it. It's a bit like describing a, the colour red to somebody you don't really know until you've seen it for yourself. Virtual reality usually comprises of using a headset and usually headphones or earphones to take you to somewhere that doesn't exist. So you would be in a different world using digital technology. When we talk about virtual reality, we're mainly talking about essentially computer-generated environments or spaces where your perception is completely enveloped in it. Virtual reality allows you to uh, experience and explore areas, locations that you perhaps haven't been to before. You can, uh, as long as you have the data for it, you can uh, inhabit any, uh, any kind of universe you wish in virtual reality. Once on the scene in science fiction shows, Virtual reality is no longer a dream of the future. With the developments in technology, it is now possible to explore new worlds without leaving the comfort of your sofa. But how did we come from the 1930s view masters to modern day virtual reality technology, such as the Oculus Rift and Google Cardboard? VR as a thing has been around for absolutely ages. I mean, in the 1960s, you could go and pay to go on a VR motorcycle uh, experience where you'd have wind blowing in your hair and, and a film of, uh, of being on a motorcycle w was shown in front of you. There was a wave of popularity of virtual reality in the 1980s uh, when actually there were arcade machines with VR headsets, head mounted devices. Those actually had cathode ray tube based uh, devices in them so the weight was quite a lot heavier so you couldn't actually play them for very long, they were very very uncomfortable. Nintendo released a thing called the VR Boy, which was in the, again, I think probably early, mid-90s, uh, which I think was probably symptomatic of all the problems in terms of marketing it, because uh, they couldn't show screenshots of what it looked like, because you had to actually experience the thing. Um, and also, again, technically, it just it wasn't really fit for purpose. In recent years, mainly initially through a device like the Oculus Rift, they realised that the kinds of screens you use in your mobile phones are actually good enough and they're small and they're light and that those kinds of screens and that kind of technology that have been developed for mobile phones might be the basis of better, lighter, easier to work with uh, head mounted devices for virtual reality. Now of course I think the key driver for virtual reality now is the games market. It's very popular uh, for games and for 360 films to an extent as well. Um, but the sort of mobile devices with uh, Google Cardboard, for example, so you can just use your phone, you don't need an expensive device. PlayStation VR is just out, so again, if you've already got a PlayStation 4, it's so a relatively low cost. I think currently of the devices in the consumer market, the HTC Vive is the gold standard, but you need a very expensive PC rig, and then the extra £800 for the Vive, so that's very much an enthusiast, uh, a wealthy enthusiast toy not one that's really mass market yet. There are technologies where you can integrate VR experiences into the web so that people can take them home um, and do them, like they can open up a web page on their phone, for example, and they can insert their phone into a headset like a Google Cardboard or the Samsung Gear VR and just slip that on and they're automatically in that other world. So it becomes a lot more accessible through web technologies than having to have large home computers and setups like that. With an unlimited amount of applications, virtual reality is no longer just for gaming. As this technology becomes more accessible, we see it implemented in many different walks of life, from medicine to education. So I think there are examples at the moment where VR is used uh, for educational purposes. For example, uh, there's a uh, demo called The Body VR, which allows a person to experience what it's like to move through a cell and little kind of instructional uh, kind of informative 
plaques appear at the side. So you're on a platform, these things appear. It's a little uh, model of DNA, for example, and it'll tell you a bit of information about it. And it gives you a really unique perspective. Uh, I think it can really engage people in a way that other mediums won't because you're so immersed in it that you can interact with these objects, you can see them from a perspective that you never could otherwise. For educational purposes, there's quite obvious aspects of just taking somebody to a lesson, yeah? transporting someone immediately from, from anywhere they are, whether it be school or home, and moving them to the top of Everest because you want to demonstrate something at that height at that location. History lessons in which you don't need to, to drag somebody around the world, you just plop them there, that'd be awesome. And then um, uh, chemistry. How many times have you had a dangerous ex experiment that you have to be applying glass and only your teacher can do, but you know, if you got a, a really good virtual representation of, you could just totally like, yeah, um, conduct an experiment on your own and experience it on your own and also experiment with it, you know. With VR for education, you still do have some of these boundaries and limitations and barriers to consider because if you're saying this is a great tool for education, by the way, you need to spend one and a half thousand pounds before on equipment before you even start the software, then you've got to think about who's that going to serve, who's that going to be useful for. With education, obviously everybody wants to jump in on that because that's a, a pretty cool sound um, means of, of bringing it forward for the, the purposes of betterment rather than um, entertainment as a, you know, a, a whole purpose. Uh, the games industry is, is you know, I suppose, unsung hero in many respects for um, accomplishments in technology which have enhanced other areas such as medicine. You know, um, 3D graphics, for instance, have been pulled into almost every other aspect of entertainment and, you know, um, education and, and medicine would be other aspects that have benefited from, from things. It's used by architects, so if, if an architect is pitching for a piece of work, what they can do is they can create a 3D model and then actually show it to the prospective customer. We, we were talking to someone earlier today whose, whose job is, is in fact creating those sorts of 3D models. Um, it's also used in medicine for training purposes um, because it's far better to let trainee doctors loose on virtual bodies rather than real ones. Um, uh, and actually it's also used uh, in therapy. So um, there is evidence to suggest that um, VR experiences can be quite a good way to help people addressing such phobias. So for example, um, creating a VR experience that gives you exposure to public speaking uh, is one of the, the, the things that has been shown to have a positive benefit. But where is virtual reality headed next? And what does the future hold for this ever advancing technology? range of, of vision, for instance, you know, you've got basically that. And when you stick on one of these headsets, I mean, the, the initial experience is like, whoa, fantastic, I could look around and see everything. But eventually, it feels like you're wearing a head, a head, you know, headset. Like you've stuck a helmet on, and that's your view, and like, oh, great. So even in horror experiences, and you're like, uh, there's something behind me, because you've got this on, you don't have your peripheral vision, you're, you're, you're freaked out even more. You know, if you had that natural peripheral vision, you could like, uh, I can see something in the corner of my eye. Um, that, for me, you know, that's the improvement for the, the headsets. There has to be a, gen, a, a general improvement, capturing that, that full round experience. In the future, I would say that virtual reality will be used more for business. So you could maybe attend virtual conferences, uh, virtual conventions uh, without ever having to leave your house. Maybe people working from home, but it's also uh, got a lot of potential to be used for people with uh, different abilities. So people who might not be able to leave the house or able to do things that people would normally be able to do, they could do using virtual reality. One of the things that VR is going to uh, allow us to do, and, and it's, we've begun to scratch the surface of it, but we'll be able to do much more of it, as space probes explore our solar system, they're all the time sending back gigabytes of high-res images of the uh, surface of Mars, of the rings of Saturn. Uh, now, as well as the scientific data, those images are spectacular, and you often find them as posters on walls or as wallpapers on computers. But VR will allow us to use those, stitch those together to allow people to actually stand on Mars in virtual reality. But in the, the far future, I'm, I see these becoming a lot cheaper, a lot more lightweight, a lot more high quality, the resolution will increase, uh, and it'll start to mix between virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, so you'll 
you won't be completely immersed in this where you know you could you might put on a headset and you're fully immersed in another world but you hit a button and it will show you the real world and you can move between the two so that if you decide you want to have a cup of tea you can stop and have a cup of tea without having to take off an 800 pound headset put it on the floor and get your cup of tea but um i guess and i'm not entirely sure what they might be but i think other ways to uh, allow you to step into a virtual world that don't require as much tip technology and hardware, I think will be the, the most likely progression to perform. Virtual reality technology has the potential to truly benefit mankind in the future, from the way we learn, work, and even interact with one another. Seemingly, the possibilities are endless, and we are only at the start of what could be the biggest technological revolution the world has ever seen.